In this video, I'm gonna take you through the one year process of me getting my dreadlocks. It all started a long, long time ago and a man and woman fell in love and they made a boy and named him Gunther the Great. Not that far back. So let's fast forward a little bit. The boy was in college and then he died. Oh, he dyed his hair blonde. And he was going through a really weird stage at the time. After a while, he got tired of the blonde and went and got his hair cut at Sport Clips. <laughs> Shortly after cutting his hair, he started his lock journey. But of course, he didn't film any of the entire process for five months. And then he made his YouTube debut with a five month dreadlock update. Apple cider vinegar. And he had the world's greatest locks ever. All right, that's still too far back. He ended up combing out his dreadlocks. He tried curls. I'm feeling lit. That's what you gotta say, because people like and subscribe to that stuff. <laughs> he tried braids. New do alert. He learned how to cut his own hair. He freeformed his hair, and then he combed those out too. This is all the hair that came out. How'd you feel about my freeform locks? I didn't like them. And then he did instant locks. He bleached those too, and then he died. Oh no, he dyed them copper. And then he cut his locks off. But you guys, here's all of my hair that I cut. And then he got super wavy with some 360 waves. And then after his hair grew out a couple inches, he started his full set of locks and that's what started this journey right here. I'm gonna give you guys some close-ups on what my hair is looking like right now. And I'm also gonna be cutting my hair at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. All right, first glance at my hair. I've actually had my locks in for, I believe 13 months. I started in November of 2020, and now it's 2022, January. So I'm gonna talk about some pros and cons. So let's start with the cons. My hair has been taking a long time to lock up, which I'm completely okay with. I enjoy the process, but it does take more work since it's taking more time. Most of the work consists of me actually going in and separating my locks. So just before I even started filming this clip, I was separating some of the locks on the back. And that's where I'm experiencing most of the combination is on the back and on the top because the top isn't fully mature and the back is where I lay the most. But my rule of thumb is just to maintain my sections as best as possible and then I'll just be good to go. Because as long as my sections are where they need to be, then my locks will continue to lock within their own lock versus combining into multiple locks. I'm trying to avoid starting any Congos because I don't want to freeform. I want to make sure that my hair is maintained as much as possible. Although I want to freeform personally, I don't want this set of locks to turn up that way. Maybe in the future, but not now. I am also thinking about trimming my locks to a certain length once they get to the length that I like them at, but I'm still debating. Another con that I've personally faced is the locks that are on the back ends of my head. Like I'll try to show you. Like these right here. Like this one right here. And everything on that bottom row is thicker than the rest of my locks. So all the locks on the top of my head are really skinny. The locks on the back of my head are actually a little thicker than the ones on the top just because they're more mature. But there are some that are actually just thick because I didn't split them when I split the rest of my locks. But why did I leave those thicker and not split them like the rest? The reason being is because they are on the hairline, which the hairline is the most sensitive part of the hair I feel just because that's where if tension pulls right there, then that's where the line will recede or just create more damage versus the rest. I think it's just like a personal preference, really. Another con with this set of locks is I have so many locks. I still haven't even counted them yet. If you want me to count my dreadlocks, make sure to leave a comment down below for a count video. I know I've asked you guys before and a lot of people did request it. Maybe it's gonna be my next video, so stay tuned for that. But I have so many locks, so when it comes to retwisting them, it's very intimidating going into it. So my main focus right now is just keeping them separated. And that's probably all of my cons right now. There's not really any other issues. Like I haven't experienced my hair being really oily or really smelly or itchy or anything like that just because I've been taking care of it. So let's talk about the pros. So my overall favorite thing about my locks is that I have so many. Even though that's a con as well, I just really like having so many locks. Another pro is that I have a full set of locks versus a high top fade. Just because when I had my high top fade, it was kind of annoying because of certain hairstyles I wanted to accomplish, I couldn't do with the high top fade. Another thing is I just really like the way a full head of locks looks versus you know, a high top fade. I know I keep resulting back to high top fade, but also even if you were to have a taper on the bottom, which I've actually contemplated if I want to do a taper on the bottom, 
but I'm leaning more towards not doing it. Although it's still in there, I might end up doing it in the future. And this is what I'm basing it on. If I'm gonna grow my hair really long, like I'm just gonna continue to grow it and not ever cut it, then I won't get a taper fade on the bottom. But if I were to maintain the length, then I'm gonna go ahead and get a taper fade on the bottom just because that's my personal preference. Another pro is that my hair is actually locking up, it's just taking time. Going into it with getting really skinny locks, especially with my hair type being a 3C, I wasn't sure if my hair was going to wanna lock up in the smaller sections, but it just takes longer time for that to happen. I look at it this way, if you use more hair inside of a lock, it's going to lock up quicker because there's more hair to lock up. I like to compare it to this. If you remember headphones when they had a wire attached to them, before AirPods, and say you had 10 sets of headphones that are all knotted together. Trying to untangle 10 of those headphones versus just untangling one headphone is gonna be a whole lot harder. So same thing with hair. The more hair that you have into a lock, it's gonna be locked up quicker. It's gonna be harder to unlock. One of the more obvious pros is that my hair looks really good. I like the way it looks. And it's actually reminding me a lot of how my first set of locks looked. And obviously there's are just more skinnier because my first set of locks were actually quite thick and I did let them go and they were congoed up and I let them freeform for a little bit. Another pro that I like right now is I'm able to actually pull all my hair up into a bun versus just a half up, half down. It's nice being able to get all of my hair out of the way, although it is still kind of tough because my hair's not that long and some of the locks will fall out every now and again, especially on the back end when I pull it all up. Another pro is with having more locks and having a full set of locks, the hairstyles that come out are amazing because you have so many more options with the full set of locks versus a high top fade or a tapered set. So let's take a look at my hair. Another recap, I have a 3C hair type. I would say I have close to 200 dreadlocks on my head. I've had my locks in for 13 months and I haven't even measured them yet. So let me actually measure them really quick, I'll be right back. So let's measure my locks. There you have it guys. My hair is eight inches long. Eight inches, 13 months. Dang, my hair did grow really fast. And the reason I'm saying that is because typically hair grows about half an inch every single month, coming out to about six inches of hair growth in one year. And with me starting my locks in November of 2020 and it being January 2022, that's only 13 months and my hair grew eight inches. That's, that's crazy. And I know a lot of you are like, dude, you're lying. There's no way you've been only growing it for a year. I'll pull up a picture to prove it right now. And it has a date stamp on it. So in month four of me growing out my hair, which was November, I started on the exact day of right here, which is November 5th, 2020. So this is proof that if you take care of your hair, it can grow faster than normal. Now let's head inside and cut my hair. As you can see, my hair is like super like growing long. That is what's going on right now. That is my five month update. 
You guys are going to see me at six month update, but in between that you might see some reviews or how to's on dread techniques. But other than that, this is Gunther the Great. Please subscribe and leave a comment below and see you guys next time.